Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. You find Ross Widget and me today in the little village of Glimpton, where right in the middle of the estate, there's a huge and wonderful house here. For years, the estate was in the same family. Uh, not any longer. Uh, the church behind me is part of the estate itself. And there are footpaths that allow you access, of course, to this church. We're going to show you around the church and we're going to show you what we can of this extraordinary estate and village. Come with me. This little village belongs to the estate of Glimpton and as a result is pretty much unchanged in the last few hundred years. It's a secret place, huddled beneath the great house in the traditional way. It sits on a fork in the road surrounded by trees with a small almshouse building and around 20 cottages. There was a manor house here since at least 1550. And since the current house is right next to the medieval church, it seems likely that it stands on the original site. There's nothing older than 18th century in the house today, which was built in the early 1700s by the Wheat family after they'd acquired the estate in 1633. It was probably to a design by Sir John Vanborough, the architect of Blenheim Palace. Sketches of what looked like the current house have been found along with more formal drawings by Vanborough to restore and renovate the old building, which were never used. In 1846, the estate passed to George Barnett, the son of a London banker. The Barnetts were an interesting family. Curtis Barnett, who lived between 1696 and 1746, followed his father into the Navy and progressing rapidly through the ranks, became a captain in 1731. He was made Commodore of a small squadron sent to the Bay of Bengal in 1744 to attack French trading vessels. A single action, which resulted in his securing significant prize money, quickly recovered British command of the bay. Curtis's second son, Benjamin, decided against following in his father's footsteps and went instead into banking, becoming a partner in Barnet, Hoare, Hanbury and Lloyd, later to become Lloyd's Bank. In 1770, he married Avis, the eldest daughter of Sir George Wheat, who brought with her the Glimpton estate. The Barnet family sold the estate in 1944 during the Second World War and it was bought by Alan Good, the Anglo-Irish head of a successful engineering company. Good died prematurely in 1953 and the estate found its way after a spell at the tender mercies of Alan Bond, the disgraced Australian businessman, into the hands of the Saudi Arabian prince Bandar bin Sultan Al Saud who invested millions in its repair and remodelling by Philip Jeb, who died in 1995, and the work was continued and completed by Nicholas Johnson and Peter Cave. Recently, it's been sold once again and is now owned by King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa of Bahrain. The sale of the estate included the 18th century Glimpton House, as well as 39 cottages a Norman parish church and 167 acres of parkland. It is the existence of this little parish church that makes it possible for us to walk through this estate and get an impression of the beauty and grandeur of the place. An ancient footpath runs down the main drive of the estate to allow residents of local villages to get to the church and nothing, not even the influence of a king, can divert or close an English right of way. I hope you've enjoyed our little visit to Glimpton 
this slightly secretive place in the folds of the Cotswolds. It's very pretty and on this lovely summer's day, peaceful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the other platforms. And please visit our website, thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk, where you'll find the details of all the other things we get up to. We'll see you soon.